Hi everyone, welcome. It's Ryan here from the London Craftsman channel. How's it going? Coming up in today's video, I'm going to be making some finger pull handles. And these are really, really useful for wardrobe doors, wardrobe drawers, kitchen doors, lots of different types, lots of different applications. You can have little slots, you can have the full length door and they are really, really nice and sleek looking and um, just means that you don't need handles or external handles. So what I'm using for today's video is the Trend CRT router table. This is the Mark III version. We've got the T14 router in here with the auto, with a power switch that's attached to the router table, start, stop. And we've got the T35 Hoover. We've also got a selection of router cutters, which I'm gonna be going through. We're using the medium one, but ultimately we're gonna be setting up the machine, setting up the fence and everything like that to make sure we get the perfect height and depth of the cutter. And we're gonna be running those finger pull handles on a piece of scrap down there and show you the results. So if that floats your boat, you wanna find out more, but stay tuned, watch to the end, and I hope you enjoy. So here is one finger pull handle that we did um, a while back, and this is on a melon mine faced birch ply. And it's just basically a slot in a piece of wood, but it's got that profile, the curved profile um, on the edge. Obviously that comes from the curve um, at the top of the cutter. And um, yeah, we don't use this part of the cutter. It just comes from the top here and stops halfway through. So this one is the smaller version. We also have a smaller version, but in a quarter inch shank. We're not gonna use that. I was actually gonna demonstrate that in this video for this, but I don't have a reducer for the half inch router that I've got. There's two other cutters that I have also. We've got a large one and we've got a medium one. I will leave links in the description for all three and all the products that I use for the cheapest prices that I've found. But we're going for this medium one right here. So what I'm gonna do now is just take out this rebate cutter and plonk in this medium size finger pull cutter and um, set it up. So the way cutter works like so, so I'm gonna use this as a reference to get the top of these blades in line with the underside of here because I'm using 18 mil on a bit of scrap. So I'm gonna drop that down until it hits the underside. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I think we'll give that a go initially and see how that works. So I'm gonna have the blade sticking out roughly 18 mil from the fence just to start with and see how that goes. And I also wanna get these fences as close to the cutter as possible. There we go, so I'm gonna nip it all up. I've got the hoover already set up to the back of the fence. Okay, so they're all nipped up. I've got the router attached to the hoover, so it should start when I flip the switch on here because it's got a little switch at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is get my scrap and give it a little test first. A bit of a test. There we go, so I think we are good to go. Hoover's turned on. Okay, so this is what it produced. And as you can see, there's a little bit of burr left on. We need a nice bit of meat there because that is ultimately where you're gonna be pulling the door open. So that's gonna be the front of the door, okay? So that's gonna be the back of the door and that's gonna be the front and that is far too thin. So we need to leave probably three mil on this little tip here, which means we need to go up the cutter. So what I'm gonna do is lift that cutter up to enable me to just get a bigger lip. So I've unlocked the router I'm just gonna give it a few turns, a bit at a time, don't go too mad, and give it a little test. <clears throat> so there we have it, we've got a fatter part here because ultimately that is where you're gonna pull the door open from. But the problem is, 
we've only got 10 mil from that point to that point. If you didn't have another door there, you had a side panel or something, you wouldn't have enough to get your fingers in. We need to just bring that back at least. So you've got 20 mil from the front of the door back to where your finger's gonna pull. So to do that, I'm just using the tape measures on the top of this and I'm just taking reference off of that. I need to go back 10 mil and give it another go. So I'm happy with that. We've got about 20 mil from the front edge of the door to where your finger's gonna be grabbing that corner and opening it. Okay, and you've still got about four mil left remaining on that tongue. As you can tell that I was taking out quite a bit of meat and what I would say to you to do is to do this first. So before I move that fence back, run everything through once at this depth and then you can go ahead and step that fence back and then just take out a little bit more meat. So doing it in two stages. If you've got a handle that is inset or not running all the way through, just be careful. On your first run, maybe just go and leave a centimeter either side. And then when it comes to do your final cut, then you just take a tiny bit more meat out, start and end of your cuts. I do see other people um, using flute cutters to take out some of the meat first. Um, but it's another process. Um, I think this is perfectly fine. The router deals with it nicely and you know, it's a nice chunky cutter. I don't think there's any problems um, with going for it in one hit. So as you can see, as long as you go slow enough and um, don't push it too hard, you should be able to achieve it in one pass. But again, probably that is the best way if you're just doing it in one long continuous run. So if you are trying to achieve handles like this where it's inset and it's not running all the way through, you just need to mark on your fences where you want to start and stop your piece. So ultimately if I flip that over, what I'll need to do is just work out where I want my router cutter to stop in relation to the, my door and then just mark that line on the fence. Okay, so we'd actually start with the workpiece at this angle and slowly bring it in until it hits the fence. We then keep on pulling it and pulling it until this back of the door hits our second pencil line. But I've marked out my lines on this fence, one there and one there, because that's what I need to machine this piece of MDF over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that cut on the green MDF. Remember, you can do it in two passes. If you are, then just start past your pencil line, plunge it in, then finish about 10 mil before you hit your pencil line. That is with the fence forward 10 mil. And then once you've done all your handles like that, then you could then drop your fence back and then go to your pencil lines completely. And that way you're not just taking out the entire amount of meat in one pass. Even though it is possible, this is what we achieved. Came out pretty good. Um, obviously you can tinker around with the settings. Every cut is gonna be different. That's what we've got. And that is just in one pass. And we've got about 20 mil there, which is perfect to get your fingers in and open the door. And yeah, I'm happy with that. I think that'd be absolutely fine to get your fingers in. 20 mil is enough. And that is in one pass, remember. And it was no problems whatsoever with that cutter and that router. So going over it, this one was the first pass, a really fine tip. And then we raised the cutter up and that gave us a slightly fatter tip, which is here about two or three mil. And that is ultimately what we went for. So there you have it, one finger pull. Um, so you can either do a continuous run just by pushing that all the way through, start to finish, or just set up your pencil lines on the fence to create the inset handle. And that is using the medium cutter. What I do, is leave descriptions to the cutters that I've got here. I've gone for the medium one to give me this. And um, if you're happy with that, then just go for this cutter. This was created by this smaller version. 
Um, so you've got the small, medium and large versions of these finger pull handles. And we simply put this in a router, dropped it in, routed it and came across and then just cleaned it out. Um, again, you can use a flute cutter to clean out a lot of this, to take out a lot of the meat first before you go for it and it just saves your blades. But yeah, the smaller one can give you a decent profile. If you want to see this one, um, we do have a video um, of how we set this up and the template that we use. So have a look at the top. You'll see that video right there if you want to just see us playing around with this cutter instead. Before we go, I was thinking about making a series of videos um, using this Trend 35 piece half inch shank cutter set. Um, all those cutters will go in that router there and that router table. So I was thinking about using, I don't know, 10 at least of these and just making a series of it of just showing you what all these cutters do and what each particular profile will cut and the applications that they are useful for. Um, so if that interests you, just stay tuned and keep your eyes peeled for upcoming videos to come. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss any. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, then feel free to subscribe. We're at 30 and a half thousand subscribers now and climbing pretty quickly. If you want to be part of that, you like our content, like what we do, and um, you've learned something from it, hit that subscribe button and leave a comment. Comment always helps. But other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Take it easy. See you next Sunday. Ciao for now.